It's the Crawford Podcasting Network for the debuting Coach Keaton and Crawford, all about the kids. That's the name of the podcast. We did a little feature on Carrie, I don't know, a month or so ago, 32 years of coaching in the Lansing Public Schools slash East Lansing Public Schools. Does, he's done a terrific job, longtime friend of the family, and we thought we'd do this podcast every Thursday. Moving forward, as long as, you know, Kerry's, you know, energetic as he always brings it and uh, full of content. So, Kerry, welcome to our debut. Thank you. Okay, thank I, you. I got one strong question right out of the bat. You got to have a nice, open ended question to stop a podcast. Start a podcast. Stop two, probably. <laughs> Is when was that moment? Was it when you were at Michigan State? We're here, by, by the way, we're at the corner. Grand River and Hagedorn at the Grand Paris Pie Company. A stone throw from Michigan State University. A stone throw from Spartan Stadium. This young man played football for George Perlis. When you were a player at Michigan State, did you say, I want to be a coach? Or did that happen at Foster School or Foster Park earlier? When when was when did the light bulb go on? I'm going to be a coach. I could I could I could tell you exactly when it happened. But I had went to of course, Eastern High School, and I, my plan uh, going to college was to, I wanted to be a chef. A chef? I wanted to be a chef. Okay. I took, I took the food management program at really? Harry Hill. Never knew that. With Harry Markovich. Oh, you got the bus and went over there? I sure yeah. did. Harry Markovich was a, my uh, teacher. Chris Bethany was my teacher okay. at Hill. And then I was there for one semester, uh, beginning of 11th grade. And then I got a job in the cafeteria at Eastern, working right underneath the ladies, learning how to cook. Not okay. Like, not like they do now. Not cafeteria what? service where you dish out the, the, the you know the, the peas and corn. Yes. You're 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 actually preparing. Where we we made food like now they just warm it up. Okay. Back then I learned how to make sausage. Because the sausage that you got for breakfast, that was homemade. We made that with hamburger and really? seasonings and say we made that know sausage. That. Uh, the donuts, the a lot of the stuff was made, but salads, you know, learn okay. how to make salad, how to make, you know, pizza, all that. We learned how to make that. Okay. And when I went to Michigan State, when I actually was because I was, you know, Major, you know, ask you what you want to major. I want yeah. to major in food management. Yeah. Learn how to you know, be a Kellogg, and I can make. Sure. When I Great learned place. what I would have to do in yeah. order to make money, uh -huh. like you're not going to make money in Lansing. So you got to move back then. You got to move. I wasn't leaving my mama. Uh -huh. No, that just wasn't going. No, you got to go to Chicago. <laughs> you got to do Detroit. Or, yeah, you know, Vegas. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not leaving my mother. So I was like, okay, well, what else do you like to do? Well, I love sports. Okay. Kinesiology. Oh, yeah. Let's be, yeah. Let's be a teacher and let's be a gym teacher. A, a, a PE. Coach. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that was literally in my line when I okay. was going through picking out, you know, and then talking to those people, like, yeah, you're going to, you know, nah, nah I'm yeah. not leaving anywhere. So, yeah. I mean, that's when 32 I decided. years later, Kerry just retired uh, at our last, when we had that little video, I, I kind of knew you were going to do this, but uh, like the next uh, three hours from that point, you, re <laughs> you resigned or retired at, boy, from Lansing Everett High School. So now you're you're coaching for Bill Farocco. Yeah, just do consulting and, with him. And, and you got some other stuff, and, some, some other side hustles on the side, keeping yourself gotta, busy, keeping them out of trouble, which is important. Got to have a hustle. Yeah. Got to keep working. Uh, yeah, yeah. Working for Michigan State. Uh, working for Dean Transportation, driving the bus, um, and like I said, consulting driving the coach, bus. driving the bus. How's that? Well, so yes. you're driving, so East Lansing goes on the road, right? And uh, to Grand Blank. Big win last night, or huge, last Friday. Huge uh, win for the kids. Seven Great win. State. So the coach, as a coach Keaton, is driving the bus. Driving the bus. That's got to be weird. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that is a multi-dimensional coach right there. It, yeah, uh, it's like, the offensive line coach. It's like uh, the, the scene from uh, Hoosiers. Yeah, yes, driving the yes. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So um, it's going good. So um, Al Schraub. I'm going to be Al Schraub. Al Schraub. Uh, from Portland, St. Patrick. Portland, St. Patrick. He drives the bus. Legendary. 
Okay. Absolutely. So, um, okay. So, if of those thirty-two years, okay, let's just start with this question: of all the things that you did in those thirty-two years leading kids, what are you most proud of? I am. I am most proud of the fact that every every day, every game. We, whatever I was trying to do, be a part of, was always, what what can we do to benefit the kids? The kids. What what can we do to make our podcast all about the kids? You know, because and I explain to guys now. I'm like, well, that's a vague, broad term. I mean, how did you narrow that? Down? Well, I, I like to say it like this. So when when I played at Eastern, my dad bought my helmet. Uh, he bought my game pants. He bought my girdle. The only thing that I used from the school was the jersey and the shoulder pads. Why was that? Because he just he didn't he didn't feel that the other stuff was probably didn't have enough. big enough size. For Which is what the good well, it was a big fella back then. It just wasn't good. Big jelly, they call it. Right, it wasn't good enough. Ah. Oh. So we go to Vanderbilt and get our own stuff. Good now place. you couldn't necessarily, you know, you know just a, that's a little going there as a kid. All the new, just the new stuff. You walk in, and we digress, but we're going to be doing a lot of that. You walk into Vanderbilt, oh, and you smell the leather of the ball gloves. Yeah, those gloves. The ball gloves. Yes, sir. That was like, you are 100% and, correct. and I'm much older than you. In 1969, the leather of the debuting Adidas Superstars Superstar. with the three stripes, you could only get them at Vanderbilt. <laughs> See, I'm a, I'm a top ten guy. <laughs> okay. So we're doing okay. top ten. So okay. So your dad bought. Okay. Uh, your dad bought you the equipment. Okay. So um, what was the question I had you? What was uh, what was the last question I had you? <laughs> Where were we going with this? What was? Um, oh, most proud. Most proud. For, you yeah. know, it just trying to provide. Yeah. The very very best. Okay. Okay. So that's the creed the that very very best for the kids taught you. Because my sisters, when they play, but not they everybody can best. do that. Not everybody can do Which that. You, you gotta get out. You gotta do it. You gotta, what, what's important to you? Okay. What Priorities. Is you know, and and as a as a as an assistant coach, uh, you know, you don't always have a lot. Didn't have a lot of say in what things went on at Eastern. Okay. With uh, with uh, Coach Disworth, you know, because I mean, he ran and he did his thing. But when I became the head coach. You know, I like to you know give autonomy to hey man, you coaching them and you coaching Bubba. I'm not gonna babysit you, you know. Here's your coaches. Yeah, and let's get them coached up. Okay. And, and but let's let's. You didn't into, micromanage. Absolutely not. Okay. Can't do time that. for that. You know, I'm doing my own thing. Plus, you know, as a head coach, you don't have you got to yeah, do time. all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to provide the best equipment, the best uniforms. Okay. The best practice. Uh, facility, yeah. The the game, you know, we played. We actually we uh, helped move when I was at Eastern. We helped move our games from Sex to Everett because Everett was a better field, in my opinion. Great field. That was a great beautiful. grass field for a long time. Beautiful field. Yeah. And um, you know, I just my thing was just to provide the best for the kids. Right. You know, we, I want them to have the things that we didn't have. Right. Okay. Uh, now let's go another direction. If you could do something, to, if you could do it, have a duel, as a coach, you know, it can be something that you really regret. That's that I shouldn't have done that, or I should have I shouldn't have done it that way, or I could have done it a better way. What would you have done different in your thirty-two years of coaching? It can be it can be a long-term thing or a particular incident. Well, you like to erase? personally, I would probably not be so. Uh, Hard and aggressive with officials, <laughs> um, only only because you know some people are uh, they are unable to let things go instead of you know that happened a long time ago. Okay, you know. Uh, okay, so yeah, it, I know. It, it could end up hurting the kids, you know, because some people yeah. they, they hold that against you kind of thing. So something that you did that you well, yeah, because I get on. I, and if I if I don't feel that they're doing the game correctly or calling it fair, I'm gonna let. Do you still do it? I do on occasion, yes. But you don't do I it. I try not to. You don't to. do it where it's going to hurt your kid. I try not to. 
Yeah, you can't not get. You can't just try. You got to get done. You do. You, you're one hundred percent correct. Don't just but, try. But you can't. I can't. I can only control myself. I can't control what they do. And they, and a lot of times, it was, a lot, yeah, a lot of times they, they make it personal. No, to me, it's not personal because I don't have the energy to give to other people like that. But you, you know still have to manage your emotion. Absolutely, one hundred percent. To not inhibit the kids. You're one hundred percent correct. Once again, as this podcast, podcast, the title is all about the kids. Exactly. And, okay. And 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 and, and, and ugh, excuse me. And advocating for them. That's when I have to figure, you know, because if they're not being treated fairly, you know, coming coaching and with Marcel and Coach Blad and Coach Perry and building what we built at every, you know, every Versus almost, grassroots. Every time that was nothing. Absolutely, that was dragging people out of the hallway. You want to get Marcel said, Literally. give football a week. Just, Just give, give us, us a week. Try. Give us a week. When we would walk out there, we would automatically be seven to fourteen points behind just because of who we were. Yeah. And to have to fight those battles, like, no, right. we are a good football team. Right. These kids deserve to be treated. No, call the holdings, yeah. call the penalties, call the cheap shots. Yeah. You know, call those things. These kids deserve to be treated just like you know. At I that got time, right. the East Lansing's, the Grand Ledges, the Holtz. Right. You know, we're trying. We're trying to elevate. But if you were getting beat down. And you see a kid right in front of, you know, an official just get clipped right. and nothing's called or a cheap shot. And it's like, well, why are we not, you know, because if we did it, we're going to get a penalty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's was like the, the, the whole underdog chip on the shoulder. It's like, well, we have to be treated fairly. Okay. I view so, in, in, in terms of sideline management of emotions of Coach Kerry T, have you improved? Over the years, I, 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 it's, it's, you're still going down. I, I go up and I, you know, because I, I get so, I, you know, because like, especially like for this, like for Coach Rocco, like the amount of time that we put in. Oh, I understand. I know all that. Touch and and then for people to come out on a Friday for two hours yeah. and want and try to dictate mm -hmm. what's going on and that, like, it's not to me. It's not fair mm -hmm. for them to. I got you. You know what I'm saying. So okay. it, it it's very it's very frustrating and infuriating when you, you get belittled, like you don't know what you're talking about, or you get you know brushed aside, doing that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And it's like, you know, we practice this stuff over and over again. We know, you know they're still kids now. They make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But when you you know now we have sideline film and we have all the stuff oh, it's yeah. like way way different you know it's like yeah. no he did not do that mm -hmm. it's right here you said he did this right. but he didn't mm -hmm. so how how can you say he did that right you know well I mean I, think, so, I mean I think mean you know in fairness and we'll get off officiating sure sure but I mean there's a there's a huge challenge in the officiating industry if you will getting officials. Absolutely. It's a shortage here in the Michigan High School Athletic Association. We talk about, Mark Ewell talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So that that's a dilemma for them. And so they, you know, they're, they're not allowed to choose from, and they're probably over participating, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Um, and they're wearing down. So maybe that's, you know, uh, part of the equation. Okay. But real quick, though. Yeah. As an umpire for over 25 years, <laughs> when you walk out on the field, your job, my oh, job. Oh yeah. One is to be invisible. Sure. Yeah. That's the that's the whole creed. Be invisible. Be invisible. Yeah. And two, be right. Don't make you so larger than the game. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The best thing you could ever say is like, did you did you do us this year? Yeah. 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 That's, that's a great year? compliment. And, and not have like, yeah. yeah, I did you three times. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, wow. That's good. Okay. So, but okay. yes. Okay. I, I I must be I must be better for our kids so long so we don't right. so I don't hurt that's still in the back and that's all that's important absolutely okay last question is podcast and then we're going to wrap things up with a just a kind of overview of our, of our podcast moving forward is this if you have there's a young a, a young Kerry Keaton coming out of Michigan State or somewhere else who wants to get into high school coaching or whatever level of coaching what would be your best bit of advice I guess, I guess it would it would depend on what level they wanted to go. 
if they wanted to do higher level coaching. Oh, define higher level. College. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Go, yeah, well, let's, let's just okay. Let's just stay. Let's stay at the high school level. High school level. Um, because there's a predominant. Now there's a lot of high school coaches that are. That's how they're getting their feet wet. Sure. Sure. Right. Sure. So. Always the little things. Do your homework. Spend as much time with different people. Don't get locked into this is the one way and this has to be. I mean, other staffs though. move around. Well, if if you're just doing because you know most people just don't jump into a varsity staff. You yeah. know, you gonna start with the little people. Well, yeah, yeah, the little and, guys, and yeah. you're coaching the little junior guys. Trojan stuff. Like that. Right. Yeah. So then expose yourself to you know call. Call a, a Bill Farrakko. Yeah. Call. Um, Be a sponge. Right. Call. Uh, see, all these guys are so young now. I don't even know who half of them are. <laughs> Call Gary Holden at a Mason. Yeah. yeah. You know. Great coach. Um, yeah. Brian Grand Ledge. Yeah. You know. Chad Folk. Yeah. Go, go spend time. Hey, can I come watch a practice? Yeah. Yeah. And just. Just and you're complimenting them doing it. Just yeah. yeah just observe how things yeah. are done because yeah. that's the one thing. I had no, you know, I mean, we've been exposed to a college football field for five yeah. years. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. But that, I mean, and we and we did that when I was, when I became head coach, you uh -huh. know, we scripted practice, you know. Yeah. But after, and then, you know, like I said, whatever, you know, we built that, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're you know, we're coaching each other. You know, that's when I learned, that's when I really learned how to coach. Right. At everyone, like, okay, this is, you know, I was, I had no business being the head coach at Eastern when I got the job because I did not know enough, you know. But I knew what I wanted to do, right? And I start and I surrounded myself with good people, you know. The That's time, the you know, yeah. and yeah. the time, uh, the John Mesners, yeah. you know, Orville Key, you know, yeah. Octavian. I surrounded myself with enough good people, right, that we could get it done while I learned, sure, you know, or tried to yeah. learn. But then we really learned that effort. You know how to build. Yeah, heck of a staff. You know, there. build yeah. the program, build right. up the kids, build you know all that kind of stuff, and then coming to with Coach Rocco is just like um, way you know the whole. I mean, it's basically seven, college. six years old now, still coaching. <laughs> yeah, basically college. You know. Like, oh yeah. I mean, he takes he takes a college level of practice organization. Absolutely. 100% correct. game week preparation. 100% correct. And yeah. so now, now I've been able to, you know, and it's sometimes it's frustrating mm -hmm. to me yeah. because I there's things that I would like, yeah. but, you know, coach has what he does and mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do, mm -hmm. you know, and I know there's things in my head that I know that we would do that, you know, would make I get that, you know, so I get that. that's the, you know, but that's the you know, that's how you juggle it. But it's absolutely, you know, I still enjoy going to practice. Sometimes, you know, this weather this week has not been conducive to. This big guy, the big guy, he gets cold. It's, he's chilly it's and wet, it's, it's cold. It's almost 70 degrees. Huh? You know, thank goodness for the turf, though. <laughs> we were on the grass yesterday, but Monday, Tuesday, oh, yeah. Tuesday, oh, yeah. and that oh, just yeah. makes life. Big game uh, tomorrow night, going against your old school in terms of your old coach. Yes. It's cool. You have Vikings, Easter, Vikings. or I mean, East Lansing taking on. East Lansing, that's uh, the Trojans are pretty hot right now. So, um, the name of the podcast, Coach Keaton and Crawford, all about the kids and moving forward. We're not just going to talk about, you know, coaching. We're going to talk about what's going on in coaching. We're going to talk about, we're going to kind of vary off into other topics when it deals with leadership and, and pick each other's brain and read and react to what's going on in the news these next several Thursdays. But, you know, it's football centric uh, in terms of carry and, uh, and so, uh, Hey, follow us on Facebook, uh, Tom's Take Community, and also on our YouTube channel. We're going to expand that. we got some really cool stuff planned ahead. Gary, great job, man. Nice yeah, work. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Wow. The guy never lacks an opinion. We'll say this about Big Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I got him speechless. You got to keep it real. Keep it real. He does keep it keep real. It real. Until next time on the Crawford Podcasting Network.